Okay, this is just a, a little special add-on uh, for this particular unique time period that we're in. And I wanted to say something about it. So, um, we've seen a lot of art, and you've heard me say the word zeitgeist probably so many times, you're like, I don't hear that word again, but I think, I think it is such an important word, especially where art is concerned. I want to uh, talk about mm, this uh, pandemic that we're experiencing, which is why we're not together, unfortunately, um, and the impact that I think it may have, should have, could have on art, uh, certainly the impact that uh, I'm hoping um, will be showing us positive results in terms of wonderful creativity uh, and all sorts of things that can come out of any really bad experience, especially for sensitive people like artists. Uh, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping for, for that at least. So then I thought, well, wait a second. The, the, the last uh, pandemic that we heard about was in 1918. Um, and that had not hit my radar. My dad hadn't been born then, but my mother was two years old in 1918. And uh, when this happened, uh, when the Spanish flu killed 50 million people worldwide and 675,000 people in the United States. Um, and what was interesting that I've learned about that particular pandemic is that most of the victims were between the ages of 15 and 34. Uh, and, and I haven't been able to figure out or find out you know, what that was about. So what, what kind of art? It seems to me that the arts would have been impacted. It seems odd to me that none of the art history books that I've looked into even mention this pandemic that had to have some sort of impact upon the art and the artists. So what did the art during that last pandemic look like? And here it is, here's one example. This is Kandinsky. Um, this is, uh, Kandinsky did inspiration, he called them inspirations and compositions. So, um, we take a look at this and it's vibrant, it's, it's intense. It looks joyful to me. Um, I, I, I've seen a lot of Kandinsky, so, um, and I'll, I'm gonna show you some others in a, in a moment here, once my cursor comes back. I'm gonna use the air. Now, I don't know, I suppose we could think of these as things under a microscope, something silent, something deadly that's, you know, proportion is all changed or whatever. You know, I'm reading that into this now, perhaps. Um, but, you know, I don't know that for sure. Kandinsky wrote about a lot about the spiritual in art. I've read that. I don't remember much from it. Um, but nonetheless, I think that's, I wanted to share like some of the art from this other pandemic that took place in our world. Picasso and Brock were also active artists doing the worst of these days um, with 675,000 people and 50 million all over the world um, were, were catching this and, and dying and whatever. So um, these are extraordinary times in which we're living and, I, and once we get through it, then it will be something to reflect upon for all of us for the rest of our lives. Count our blessings if we all come out on the other end, if we haven't lost somebody very special or whatever. Uh, before, before closing, um, I wanna talk about, so we're, you, you can't tell what art is gonna end up in these art history books right now. It's gonna take some time uh, for us to figure that out. And so there are magazines that, um, Art in America and Art News, that for those of us really interested in art need to be in touch with on a regular basis. Um, and what's interesting is so often when I read these magazines, uh, I am 
disturbed, I am confused, I am like, seriously? Is that, is that all there is to art anymore? And yet I have to realize the fact that from this particular place, I don't have any answers for what art is going to be in the last chapter of the 30th edition of Laurie Schneider Adams. But it will be interesting uh, to figure out and see that someday. I have my, my uh, I think Christian and Jean-Claude will be two of the best representatives of this particular time period. And an artist whose work I don't have images of, and that's Andy Goldsworthy. So you might want to look up Andy Goldsworthy at some point in time. He also has a film out that, uh, that I haven't previewed, but I understand it's quite wonderful. Anyway, um, I'm not sure that, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if you're watching this and hearing this is because I've looked at it and decided it was worthwhile of your time and interest, but I, but I, I am surprised that when I read about art history and 1918, that this, what must have been so completely frightening, uh, pandemic thing, isn't mentioned at all. Who knows why? All right, that's it. Ciao.